It's authentic. When we come to your school, we all in the stands with you. It's inspirational. The Honeybees is more than just about the field show. It's about inspiring young women. It's groundbreaking. It was like, oh my gosh, there's a girl trying out for drum major, all this stuff. Da, 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 da. From the campus to the community, we cover everything HBCU. It's HBCU 101. Welcome to the season finale and a very special edition of HBC 101. I am your host, Jaleel Thurman. All year long, we've taken you behind the scenes of some of your favorite HBCU homecomings, concerts, and big events. Today, we're going to give you truly an inside look at this year's Celebration Bowl here in Atlanta, Georgia. This was the fifth year of the event that decides the national championship for HBCU football. Every year, tens of thousands of people attend the game, formerly at the Georgia Dome, and now at the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. While millions more watch at home every December on ABC. But it's only here that you'll get the full experience of what it's like behind the scenes. Our Tali Carr was there from the moment North Carolina a and and Alcorn State pulled up into the A all the way up until the trophy was raised. He begins our coverage of this Celebration Bowl special on HBCU 101. Hey, Jalil, I tell you what, North Carolina A&T, Alcorn State, they've put in the work. But before we get to the seriousness of Saturday, let's take our viewers behind the scenes. These guys got here midweek. Atlanta, man, they got to have a good time. Let's check out the Braves and the Aggies on the streets of Atlanta. <laughs> Both teams pulled into Atlanta on Wednesday afternoon. It was windy, it was cold, but that didn't stop the welcoming committee. Celebration Bowl Executive Director John Grant was there to greet everyone personally. And Alcorn State even had their own pep squad waiting for them on the hotel steps. Now the Omni where they're staying, one of the nicer places in downtown Atlanta, but when they bring the barbershop to you, now that's living. Now these guys had to get sharp because they were headed off for a trip to the College Football Hall of Fame. That's where we hand our coverage off to Wally Pitt, who was there. The College Football Hall of Fame is unrivaled in terms of pageantry, tradition, and mystique. And you can add a whole lot of swag to that list after a visit from the 2019 MEAC and SWAG champions. Alcorn State and North Carolina a and took a pre-celebration bowl visit to the Hall of Fame and injected some of that HBCU drip into the hallowed hallways in Midtown Atlanta. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The Aggies pulled up red carpet ready, with everybody showing off fistfuls of rings. Because, you know, they've been here before, a few times. I know what it is, man. Showtime, every time we come to Atlanta, we put on, man. I know what it is. I feel like home, you feel like I'm been here, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is my third year here. I mean, last year I ain't played, so back, this year I'm back, you know what I'm saying, for the man, because I ain't going to play last year. So. That's a blessing, because, you know, we, we, trying to, we trying to get here one day, you know what I'm saying? My boy, man, he, he definitely going to be in here. I'm just enjoying the moment right now, you know what I'm saying? Like, everybody don't get this opportunity, so, you know, we just cherish the moment, you know? Braves showed up looking like a purple bow tied hit squad. And even though they were dressed alike, there was still some room for a little individual drip as well. But they made sure to leave no doubt that the Braves came to the A 
for revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got my got you, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. and this yep. team and you know for also for the university man. man we, you know we've been focused and locked in this whole trip and you know like come back said we got for our perfect game and you know we're gonna try to do that but just the last game you know it's this 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 all the market right here man it's yeah. it so. it's a business show we came to enjoy everything you know yeah. we feel we extremely blessed to be here in this extremely position blessed. you know we're gonna represent the sweat but we came here to win yes sir you know they, they left bad on um, they left bad taste in our mouth last year so them boy you know we ready. We gotta go get it, man. And they also let us know they do turn up in Mississippi as well. <laughs> but even through all the jewelry and dancing and an overall good time, it wasn't missed that they were in the same room with some HBCU football history too. There was the game ball from Eddie Robinson's 324th win. You know, the one where he passed Bear Bryant for most wins in NCAA history. They had Willie Satellite Titans jersey from 1985 and the 2007 Black College National Championship trophy. And on Saturday, these players will not only add to their individual legacies, but they'll end another chapter in the 127 year history of HBCU football, with one team hosting the trophy as Celebration Bowl champions. Thank you, Tali and Wally. I see there was a lot for the players to get into during the week, but we're just getting started here on HBCU 101. When we return, we'll look at the impact that the Celebration Bowl has on HBCUs and the advantage teams have by just making it to Atlanta. Stick around, we'll be right back. Coming up next on HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Welcome back, everyone. It's a dogfight every year just to make it to the Celebration Bowl. In the MEAC, the line starts behind North Carolina a &T. The Aggies have made it to the game four out of the five years with one appearance by rival North Carolina Central in 2016. On the SWAC side, only Grambling State and Alcorn State have made it to Atlanta. While the goal is to bring home the championship, just making it to Atlanta is a win worth celebrating you know these kids get recognized all over the country from this one ball game several uh students get introduced to a t education from this ball game i think one month we had thirty thousand applicants in one month you know so uh that stuff is priceless you know i'm sure the, the chancellor is uh loving this so, uh, you know, have, uh, it goes uh, beyond just the athletic side of it. It is a great thing for HBCU football. Now you can be declared the national champion, the best in HBCU um, from the MEAC and the SWAC. So I think it's a great idea for both, both MEAC and SWAC institutions. Um, you get a chance to, to showcase the universities, um, national televised ball game. Uh, get a chance to see a lot of media on TV. So it's a wonderful thing for, for both conferences, I think. This is going out across the nation on ABC. What does this mean to your conference year after year as this bowl game continues to gain steam? Well, it's very important. Uh, it's tremendous for our conference, the name brand, the recognition, the notoriety, for us to be in households that we normally are not able to get into. A quality brand of football. There are no other FCS conferences that have bowl games. There are no FCS conferences that put the amount of people in the stands that we do. There's no other FCS conference that does what we do as far as the name brand recognition. So just proud, excited, and this is a huge stage for all of us. All right, we have to get a prediction here. Are we going to get? Uh, are we going to get North Carolina a and or are we going to get? Uh, the winners from Alcorn State. Who? No, we're, we're gonna leave you. We're gonna leave you out of this. Cooper, who's gonna win? 
<laughs> I think she said all corn. I think she said all corn. So increased enrollment is great. And edge in recruiting makes everyone happy, of course. But at the end of the day, let's not discount what it means to hold up that trophy as the best team in HBCU football. So who has the edge in 2019? Let's go back to the stadium, to our Tali Carr. Okay, Jaleel, we're getting closer and closer to kickoff of the Celebration Bowl. Who's going to win? Man, I don't know, but you know it's going to come down to the quarterback, right? You have Felix Harper for Alcorn State, Khalil Carter for North Carolina A&T, and these guys have two unique stories. One, of patience. The other, perseverance. North Carolina A&T quarterback Khalil Carter appreciates his opportunity in this year's Celebration Bowl. Last year at this time, he was watching the game from a wheelchair after being injured in a serious car accident. It, it could be taken away from you at any point. I tore my ACL before, got in an accident. So like you said, you just gotta cherish it. And uh, you gotta give it 100 every time you step out there. Nothing more, nothing less. You know, it's almost a miracle come true, honestly. And um, we tell him all the time, don't take it lightly. You know, God put you back on this earth for a reason. He put you back in this position for a reason. And I think he understands that. And um, I'm very proud of, uh, you know, his leadership and his um, willingness, you know, to be successful and doing the little things right all the time. He's one of those kids that made people around him better. And uh, that's a special gift to have. On the other side is Felix Harper, a red shirt junior who has enjoyed good health, but not much in the way of playing time until this season when starter Noah Johnson went down with an injury. Well, you know, he had Army and he had a couple of um, FBS schools that was that was in his sight. Um, but when he committed, I was very, very thrilled that he did. And uh, just being able to get him to come in and, and uh, play behind Noah Johnson. And, and uh, now he's become a starter after Noah went down. So uh, I'm excited about the young man. He's very humble and want to make sure things done the right way. Come from a real good family. So mom and dad, uh, they appreciate us. and. Uh, of recruiting him and like I said, I always thank the parents for having the kid to come here. So that's exciting to me. Coach Max sat down and talked to me and said, you know, everything's going to be fine. So, you know, I just, everything is situation. I put God first, you know, being patient, you know, waiting my time, work hard each and every day. And, you know, my teammates also helped me with that. You know, they said, be patient, man. I promise you, you're going to be one of the best quarterbacks to come here out of all corners. So, you know, those guys helped me, uh, gave me courage. And, you know, I just put God first and kept pushing each and every day to work hard. And now I'm here, like, it's amazing, it's just a blessing. Two great young men playing quarterback for both the Braves and the Aggies. We're getting closer to kickoff of the Celebration Bowl. When we return, we're gonna go inside the stadium to hear what the fans have to say. You're watching a special edition of HBC 101, behind the scenes at the Celebration Bowl. We'll be right back. Coming up next on HBCU 101, Welcome back to HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101 and this special behind the scenes edition of the Celebration Bowl. So we've shown you so far what both of the teams have been up to ever since they arrived in Atlanta. But it's almost time to get down to business. Tali Carr has made his way inside the stadium and now he is standing by with some very, very special fans from Alcorn State. All right, we found some very feisty Alcorn fans here who are telling me that the third time is it's the charm. It's a charm. The third time is a charm. There's no way that we won't walk away today without a victory. Go Alcorn Braves! The Alcorn Braves going to jump out in the bushes and grab you. The Alcorn Braves going to jump out So we're here with Margaret Wilson, who informs me that she was one of the original Golden Girls. Is this correct? That is correct. We were the very original. And in fact, last year, we celebrated, we, our, 50th we celebrated our 50th anniversary at Old Corn. We went on the field, and they announced us, had a parade, a float, and we had a wonderful time. 
Wow. So how much pride do you have when you see the the lineage that continues and the foundation that you guys laid as the original Golden Girls. Oh, we are very excited and we have in fact done some things with them last year. Uh, they have been very supportive of us and, and elevating us and we've been the same with them. All right, Miss Paulette, I'm going to ask you real quickly, how proud of you of Alcorn and how much do you love those braids? The wrong question. Proud of Alcorn. We love the braids. and the water is a little bit sweeter. <laughs> the original Golden Girls hanging out with us here at HBCU Game Day. Okay, I see you, Tali. He went out in a crowd and found the original Golden Girls from Alcorn State, and they are still looking good to this day. All right, guys, we have one more commercial break, and I promise you that you will hear from the Aggie fans with their Aggie pride, you know, plus, We'll be able to show you who won the 2019 Celebration Bowl. It's a special edition of HBCU 101. We'll be right back. HBCU 101. Welcome back to HBCU 101. Okay, the moment is here. It's time to kick off the 2019 Celebration Bowl and crown a HBCU national champion. But before we do that, we have to show equal coverage, right? We heard from all corn fans in the last segment. They sang their songs and promised a victory. Let's go back to the Mercedes-Benz Stadium now and see what those Aggies have to say. All right, we got super fans in the stands. We have super fans down on the sideline. Latoya and Harry Lucas are here. Of course, they're representing A&T. This is just uh, like an annual Christmas thing for you guys, right? Absolutely. We've been to every single game, every single celebration bowl. We don't miss it. Doesn't matter what school, we are repping the me at. Harry, what does this mean uh, for your family, your friends, this time of the year, celebration bowl? Oh, it's awesome supporting the MEAC. Uh, it's normally my birthday, so it's it's a great opportunity to fellowship with old friends. Uh, I'm a graduate of North Carolina Central, so you know we've experienced this as well. But you know, my wife is an Aggie, so I'm here. You know, you know, Latoya, I was wondering. I saw your A and T gear. I said, well, you know, he's just representing the Sigmas, but I see we got we got that house divided here. So, are you allowed? within your heart to cheer for a &T, or do you just show up? I'm cheering for the MEAC. <laughs> <laughs> he wouldn't say it. He said, I'm cheering for the MEAC. Latoya, do you rub it in? I don't because my daughter is a senior at Central, so our money goes to both schools. You're outnumbered at home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you guys predict today? Look, he, he's a little more impartial. Harry, what do you predict today? Aggies are winning. The Aggies will win it. All right, you heard it. You heard it from a central man himself. Uh, Aggies, we've heard both sides. Let's get ready to go to kickoff and find out who's going to win the 2019 Celebration Bowl. It all comes down to this: Celebration Bowl five. No more tweets. No more talking. We got Alcorn versus a and and both teams were teed, ready to brawl for it all in the Mercedes-Benz Stadium. And the Braves and the Aggies blew the roof off this mother like Parliament. How many points they score? A lot. First quarter, Carter the Bell over the shoulder like little Michael Jackson in the studio with Barry Gordy. He topped it off with the LeBron chalk toss. That's a whole lot of goat business right there. Alcorn right back though. Phoenix Harbor to Chris Blair. 36 yards and it's 10-7 break. But don't blink. Zachary Leslie gets a 56 yard score. Then Corey Banks gets one from four yards out, and it's 24-10, Aggies at the break. And this halftime really wasn't a break at all. The sounds of dynamite and the blue and gold marching machine went crazy. Now the third quarter had so many points, I'ma just roll them off for you. Jamey Martin, 75 yards through the tunnel, 31-10. Felix Harper, six yard run, 31-17. Khalil Carter to Ron Hunt, 38-17. Deshaun Waller, 23 yards. 
Elijah Bell gets another 20-yard score. Plus a step over, that makes it 45-24, and the Aggie fans done brought their own championship belt to the A. All in all, it was 49 points scored in the third quarter alone, and it's 52-31 going into the fourth. This one was a final scene of Scarface-type shootout. Alcorn was able to cut the deficit down to 14 points in the fourth, but them dogs was just too much. a t wins 64-44, most points in Celebration Bowl history, and Aki 3 Pete. And if you didn't know, you can't spell Atlanta without A-N-T. You can't spell Atlanta without A-N-T. You so can't spell know. Atlanta without A-N-T. When my A&T. boys come back next Remember time, that. you know what's going on. You can't spell Atlanta without A-N-T. Right, I said now. last year. You said it last year. It's the Aggie Bowl. Ain't no celebration anymore. You heard what he said now. This ain't no fluke anymore. It ain't a fluke. That's three in a row. Yes, sir. Be here, best team in uh, ABC football, and we uh, showed that today. Uh, just Wesley be here, uh, watching all my guys that came off of me, and uh, just turn around, and look at them, man. They're happy, and uh, Aggie Pride's happy. Our line played great today, and uh, we just had to play our best game all year, so I'm glad to be part of it. Wow, the Aggies left no doubt. It was a North Carolina AT three P with the 64 to 44 win over Allcorn State. A great year for both teams, but it's hats off to those Aggies. Apparently, you can't spell Atlanta without A and T. Special thanks to our partners at HBCU Game Day for collaborating with us. I want to take you guys behind the scenes at this year's Celebration Bowl. That's it for the 2019 football season, and that's it for the first season of HBCU 101. It's been a fun ride, and we look forward to bringing you all more great stories about our HBCUs. On behalf of everyone here, I am your host, Jaleel Thurman, and you all have a happy new year.